Mexico right now. The effects of this storm are being felt far from our area. From the Gulf of Mexico to the tip of Maine, no part of the East Coast was spared. At least 30 people are reported dead from this storm, 12 of them in Florida. Most of the deaths were in Florida, where as many as 50 tornadoes were reported. One of those deaths took place when high winds hit a mobile home that was brought in to help the victims of Hurricane Andrew. Some two million people in Florida are without power and hundreds of thousands throughout the Deep South due to downed trees and power lines. High winds whip through the Deep South along with deep snows that are nearly unknown so far south. We come from New Hampshire for spring in Atlanta, and you do this stuff to us? Just for you. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Along the eastern seaboard, the shorelines are taking a huge battering with winds that have been clocked in excess of 100 miles an hour. Mass evacuations have been made in low-lying areas. Washington's capital may be a pretty picture, but D.C. is pretty much at a standstill. Hundreds of public events have been canceled. The Smithsonian Institution is closed. National and Dulles airports are shut down. The storm also has closed major airports in Atlanta, Baltimore, Philadelphia, Boston, and Pittsburgh. They may not be able to fly in Pittsburgh, but that didn't stop them from marching. Pittsburgh residents braved the hostile elements to go ahead with their St. Patrick's Day parade. Not so in Boston, where the storm forced the postponement of their St. Patrick's parade to next week. And today, President Clinton says that he has sent two representatives from the Federal Emergency Management Agency to tour the storm states. Mr. Clinton says that he is discussing with his aides just what federal resources should be made available. So we know that help is on the way. Mm, well, how will this story end for us tonight? What is left of this storm? Let's right. go now to Frank Field and Craig Allen in the Channel 2 Weather Center. I would have to think, uh, <laughs> thanks Michelle and Ernie, I would, Ernie, I would have to think right now, uh, coastal flooding besides yeah. the snowfall that was coming well, back. Well, I, I have an idea. Mary Murphy was out at, uh, at Seagate, right? Mm -hmm. Is that right, Ernie? Yes. Okay, there it is. I was just Look about to say, can we see, you remember earlier this evening, Mary was saying that it was awfully calm and peaceful and, and it was sort of like uh, a lull. Well, here's the lull. It's changed around completely, and now the winds are beginning to whip in once again, and that is really the problem, the flooding, the coastal warning, flood, the flooding that we have. So let's show you a diagram of why we expect maybe there's some help on the way. This is where the storm is now. All right, and that storm system is going up to the north and going to track just west of the city. The winds are going to switch around from what they are now, southeast to southerly, to eventually northwesterly once that storm goes on by. If that's the case, water that has been funneled up into Long Island Sound through the course of the day, as well as even up the Hudson, you know we have a coastal flood warning for the Hudson tonight, all the way up to the Bear Mountain Bridge. But if this is the case and we can get that storm by, by let's say two, three, four o'clock in the morning, we might be able to pull some of that water out of there with that northwesterly wind and uh, thereby decrease what would otherwise be a devastating tide of about six or seven feet above normal. But you want to tell me something well, about no, Bayville, right? Or the yeah, uh, you know, the problem here is it's a complicated problem. High tide between 12 and 4 a.m. That north wind that Craig was pointing out, if we can go back to that chart, if we still have it up there, that north wind will push the water literally yeah back against the North Shore, the South Shore will be saved by South that. Shore of Connecticut That's and the South right. Shore of South Long Shore Island, of right. Connecticut, South Shore of Long Island, and the Jersey Shore will mm -hmm. be saved because that strong northwesterly wind, which also, by the way, will be responsible for some blizzard conditions because that strong northwesterly wind will bring that snow back to us. And as we pointed out earlier in the broadcast, we had, a, we had anticipated two, three, four, and even five inches right. of additional snow overnight. So uh, it's really a question, does that low come through? We expect it to come through during uh, around midnight. Once it moves through, then that flooding problem for much of the area will diminish greatly. And just to give you an idea of what's happening behind that storm, in eastern Pennsylvania, the Lehigh Valley on up into the Poconos, moderate to heavy snow is falling again, as well as blowing snow, and temperatures are back down into the upper teens and 20s, with winds that are gusting up to about 25, 30 miles per hour. It may not sound like much, but you combine that with visibilities of a quarter mile or less, and you have blizzard conditions once again. That's why we think it's going to stay in the forecast. Of course, and also the fact that uh, John Slattery was out there in the, in the rain. Right. That's going to change. Mm -hmm. Right. That is going to change. A lot of folks now are looking out the window and see nothing's happening or there's mm -hmm. some light rain. That's going to switch over because once that low goes up to the northeast, the cold air comes sweeping in.
temperatures begin to fall, it changes back to snow. So that's why, in spite of the apparent the appearance of the weather out there, it's so calm right now. Sure, yeah. uh, blizzard condition, the warning is still in effect, and the, the coastal, coastal flood flooding warning. is still in effect. Mm -hmm. But just to read you right, there could be a possible break here for us. Is that what you're saying? We're in, in it. terms of the direction of that storm. Oh, I oh, see no, what no. you mean. Yeah. Well, we're in we're in the lull right now, but I think Ernie's saying that it may not be so bad for some areas if we can get that wind to if, to the northwest. If that if, low if, moves if. through, we have a couple okay. of ifs. The timing is very important. Okay. Big if there. Okay. Yeah. We'll continue to follow it. Thank you, Craig and Frank. We're going to be coming right back to you. We have reporters out in New Jersey and Long Island, and more important information for you as our coverage of Blizzard 93 continues in just a moment.